my single mothers, we gon' make it out here. Hey. <laughs> this is not gonna go on there at all. All right, y'all, without further ado, actually, never mind. No, we're gonna, matter of fact, if you are a single mom right now, or if you know a single mom, just go ahead and give them a round of applause. Y'all give yourself a round of applause. You are doing it, okay? You're killing it, y'all. If you are a single mom and your kids are still living, <laughs> no, I'm no, honestly and truly, you're doing it. You're doing amazing. And I just wanted to give you a hand clap because this job is not for the faint, okay? Being a single mom is not easy. And I just wanted to highlight and to celebrate you before we even hopped into the tips. So now, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the first tip. And the first thing that I had to do that really has helped me along my single mom journey is I had to forgive myself. Uh, I really had to take a step back and to forgive myself. Um, I don't think that any of us have a child or get pregnant with the intent of, oh, I wanna wake up and be a single mom. I don't think that many people went into their situations or their journeys like that. And so however you got into this position that you're in right now as being a single mom, I want you to just take a step back, be very kind to yourself and to forgive yourself. Um, I think oftentimes, we can't parent how we want to because we're full of shame and we're full of guilt. And so sometimes it's like, oh man, I want to raise my kids in a two-parent household or I messed up or you're just feeling like you failed. And so for anyone who feels like they have failed today, I just want to affirm you and say you did not fail. You are still in the will of God for your life and just know that he has already forgiven you for whatever it is. But sometimes the situations that have occurred were nothing that you had control over. And so just accept your situation right now and forgive yourself. Be kind to yourself. You need to on this journey. Um, the second thing that really has helped me along this journey has been to allow God to be my strength, y'all. When I tell y'all some mornings, even when it comes to getting out of the bed, like my child wakes up at six o'clock in the morning, even on the weekends, y'all, and she'd be ready to go. And I literally have to call on the Lord and I've learned to call on him out loud and say, God, I need you today. Like, I need you to be my strength because honestly, right now I feel depleted. I'm drained. I don't have any energy. Um, yeah, and I just ask him to be my strength, literally. Even when it comes to those long weeks and those weeks where you sometimes you feel like you haven't had time for yourself. Because if you're a single mom, sometimes help is not always offered. And so I've literally had God give me strength on days where I felt drained and I could feel his presence near me. And so I want you to start pausing a little bit more and I want you to start really asking God for strength throughout this journey. Because if you're trying to superwoman this journey, I got news for you, baby. That's going to come to an end real soon. And you're going to find yourself real stressed out. Maybe you already found yourself stressed out. And so that's probably because you're doing it alone and you're not doing it with God's help. So ask the Lord to be your strength and he'll do it. I'm telling you. I'm literally the third thing that I think has been really, really helpful has been kicking the stinking thinking. That's lame, but I really, uh, I guess I'll rephrase it as the negative thinking has to go, y'all. Um, honestly, I feel like a lot of the times mothers spend this journey shaming or just being so angry at the person who um, got them pregnant or who they've had the baby with, where all you're thinking every day, even sometimes when you look at your children, unfortunately, you're thinking how you can't stand that person or how this person put you in this position. And I want you to remember that when you're doing that and when you're giving that person all that power over you, it's only taking more energy and time away from your children who really didn't ask to be here and they're just longing for you to be present and to connect with them. And so don't allow that negative thinking to interfere with your life, with your health and with your parenting. Um, even thinking like, oh man, I'll never be out of this position or when will this end or everybody else has it going on and I'm struggling. Whatever your thinking pattern is, I want you to start turning it into a positive way of thinking. So it's called reframing. Um, I want you to reframe your situation as, 
oh my gosh, I won't get these days forever. Let me cherish these days with my baby girl. Let me cherish these days with my baby boy because I don't know when I'll get these days back and I want to enjoy every moment. Reframe it like uh, even when you're thinking about the other partner, I hope they're healing so they can be the best father that they need to be for the child. Because just to clear it up, your child is still worthy and deserving of having a good father in their life. So we really want the best for them. And when you get to that point in your healing journey, it's going to bless you so much because your energy and efforts won't be focused on bringing them down, but it'll be focused more on wishing the best for them, right? Wishing them well. I ain't saying they won't get on your nerves from time to time. I'm just saying at the end of the day, you want to see them do well, okay? Uh, so kick the thinking, thinking. That's going to drain you. The next tip I have is just taking care of yourself, y'all. And I know this may sound foreign for a lot of y'all because a lot of you guys are probably like, taking care of myself? I don't even have time to brush my teeth. Hopefully you do, sis. And if you don't, we got to change that right below in the comments and I'll help you think of a routine or something. But um, yes, you have to take care of yourself. And if you don't take care of yourself, there is no way that you can take care of others. Period, y'all. We do not need to be the generation of people who are caring for everybody else and we have nothing left to give ourselves. So take time for yourself. Nourish yourself spiritually. Your quiet time with God may not look like being able to spend hours like it may have been before, before you had your baby. But even if you're taking time literally after you drop the kids off at daycare, or I don't know what your situation is, if you have daycare or not, but when your child goes to sleep, take some time and get in that word. Take some time to read the book. Um, I have How We Heal Here by Alex L. Stuff that's going to nourish and feed your mind and encourage you to um, just be well. Uh, take care of yourself physically, y'all. Um, if you cannot get to the gym, maybe even with your kids in the um, in, in their stroller, just going for a walk, getting outside and breathing. Do not neglect you because your kids, you know, these kids, they're going to need you and they ain't going to care if you have a sore uh, a sore thigh from working out or if you have a headache. They want you. And so... If you're not good, you're not going to be able to give them goodness. You're just going to give them the stress that you're carrying. And that's just going to probably destroy their confidence or impact them in a negative way. And we don't want that. So just take care of yourself, y'all. Also, another thing to be realistic, um, and that's, this is going to go into another one of my points. I guess I'll just go into it. The other one is ask for help, guys. Because sometimes the only way that you can take care of yourself is by asking others for help and i struggled with this so hard y'all like even when i was pregnant i was living with my aunt and i had to ask her like to help me with basic things like get the groceries out of the car stuff that i was used to doing and she would say girl you better ask me and it kind of helped me to start getting more comfortable but still a part of me is always feeling like if i'm asking for something i'm a burden and i want you to pause if that's you and I want you to literally break that mindset because you have some real people around you who care about you and who love you and who have offered to help you. And if you have not had that, I'm going to encourage you to either find like a really good um, church home or even if it's not that, even if you just need to strengthen and nourish some friendships around you and just pray. God will reveal the people that can help you. But some days you're going to need self-care days. Um, some days you're going to just need a break altogether. And so if you don't ask, it's one of those things where a closed mouth don't get fed, okay? So you can't be expecting people to read your mind. They don't know that you're over here struggling in the house and you ain't been outside for 10 days because you ain't had no help. I'm being extreme, but sometimes it really do be like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, ask for help because the more you ask for help, the better it'll be for your kids in the long run. And the reason why I keep bringing the focus back to kids and the kids is because honestly, these children that we had did not ask to be here and I feel like they deserve the world. And so we just want to make sure that we give that to them while still taking care of ourselves. Okay. Other tip I had is be present with your kids, y'all. Um, so many times we're consumed with social media or we're consumed with other people's lives where we're not even present with our child or we have so many problems going on. Let's just call it what it is. We got bills to pay. We got um, different things, projects that we want to work on ourselves. We have all kinds of distractors and things that could really are really begging for our attention. But I've realized that 
I want to be present with my child because I don't want to miss moments where I'm looking back and saying, what did we even do then? Or what was she even like when she was three? What was she like when she was four? Like, I want to remember everything, y'all. And there's so much beauty in that because the more present you are with your child, I feel like the more confident they are. I feel like the more reassured they are and the more um, safe they feel with you. Um, just because they know that my mom is really paying attention to me. Like, my mom really cares about what I'm doing. So um, no matter what age, y'all, I don't care if your child is 16 and they're like, mama, get out of my room. No, baby, I want to spend some time with you. Or if they're talking about school, let me be interested in what you're interested in. You know, so be present with your kids. Don't be so stressed out by the woes of becoming, of, of being a single mom where you miss the most important part. And that's showing up and being present for your babies. Um, okay. And I guess, oh my gosh, I'm almost done. This video to me has been so like, it's just therapeutic even talking about all this. But I want you to release bitterness. And I know we spoke about that before when I referred to um, my other point. But guys, we don't need you bitter, baby. We need you better, okay? Better, not bitter. Okay, because you got to realize life is going to go on and life moves forward. And the last thing we need is a bitter woman who has such beauty and all these great things going for her. But internally, she's bitter. So in order for you not to be bitter, you're going to have to pray and ask the Lord how to forgive the people who have hurt you along this journey. And I'm not just talking about the other partner. I'm not talking about... Um, I don't know, but I, I, I may be speaking to like maybe if there's there families that have hurt you along the way. Maybe that's your own family, uh, people who you thought were supposed to be there for you along this journey. Whatever it is, I encourage you to forgive. And it's easier said than done. But when you do it, y'all, it frees you inside. And the way that you operate, you operate out of love. You operate out of goodness because you're in a good, you're in a good space. You've learned to release, guys. And you owe it to yourself to not be better. Like, you owe it to be better. I want you to come through this season of your life like a champion. Because I feel like after you've mommed and then you've been able to maintain yourself and just to do what you needed to do, you're going to feel great. So, let the bitterness go. Release all bitterness. And, oh, and I wanted to say too, be patient with yourself um, while you're learning to forgive it doesn't happen overnight but just know that you'll get there and when you do like i said it'll feel so good and the last thing i have for y'all is to trust god with everything i know i talk about god a lot but when i tell you he's been my true anchor in all of this he literally has and so just learn to lean on him and depend on him lean on him for the bills Lean on him for your career. Lean on him for your kids' health, for your own health. Just lean on him. Allow him the room to really work and move in your life, to hold your hand through this journey. He can literally hold your hand. He can hold your hand in this journey, and he can also give you a new mindset or give you new eyes on how to see your situation, y'all. So I just believe that better is coming. Better is coming and it's better than what has left you or what's behind and you owe it to yourself but more importantly you owe it to your babies so i hope this video has been helpful to y'all and uh now you can go ahead and like it if you liked it and if you didn't understand that too you know but um single moms you shall be great in this season okay and i'm here for you can't wait to hear more if you want to hear more videos about being a single mom or about like tips that may have helped me please comment um and let me know and i will definitely shoot out some more content because this is my passion i love to talk about that i love to talk about things that i have gone through so yeah hey 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 let me stop beatboxing because y'all gonna be like dang she always beatboxing but i like to okay i'm done see you next time oh also, remember what I said. Do not let fear hold you back in 2023. I cannot stress that enough. Fear, you gotta go. Blessings are right outside of your comfort zone. Hey, hey, hey. Single mom, single mom, you go make it happen. 
one thing you might not get in is much napping, but you know you gon' do it. And I got your back through it, hey, hey. And I got your back through it. Y'all, I used to be a rapper back in my day, but my bars have faded. Anyways, I love y'all so much. Thank you for letting me be myself and subscribe and like. Ow, hey, hey. Oh yeah, and this book, How We Heal by Alex L, is really, really good. That's been my girl since day one. I really will link this book in the, um, I always say my bio. I'll link it in the description box below. It's great. And can we just talk about this lip real quick? Can we just talk about this Ruby Woo? It always works wonders, y'all. And it makes my teeth look super white. And they are white because I'm brushing them in the morning and the night. Not three times a day, though.